Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Steven and welcome back. In this video, I want to present the following question. Who do you consider black slash African American? Right? And this is, you know, me asking for your personal opinion on the matter, right? You know, how do you feel personally about this, right? Um, do you feel like blackness is only someone who, who's 100% black, as in, you know, nothing else tracing to any other regions except for Africa, like no DNA tracing to any other regions except for Africa, like 100% black, if you're not um, straight from the motherland, then you're not black. All right, because I think some people kind of feel like that, particularly in Latin America. I think, <clears throat> um, or do you feel like perhaps blackness is like you know perhaps seventy five percent black, right? If you're like seventy five percent black, you would be considered black. Yeah, um, or perhaps you feel like blackness could be fifty percent, right? You just perhaps have to have at least a black parent within the first generation, right? A black mom, a black dad, at least, right? Because some people do feel like that. I personally, well, I guess I'll get into how I define blackness a little bit later. Um, do you feel blackness is perhaps, say, at least a black grandparent, you know, about 25% black? Um, or perhaps do you feel like blackness is just being related to, you know, biologically related to any black person, no matter how distant the relationship is, you know, like the one drop rule. Do you feel like some people do uh, subscribe to the one drop rule? Because that rule has been in effect in effect for a you know a while a long time you know so I can understand some people feeling that way um, however I'll give you my breakdown how I personally feel about each of the things that I've mentioned right I guess we could start with the hundred percent black first okay when it comes to us like black slash African American people particularly you know black folk in the United States who have had a long history in the United States, I think like the majority of us are not gonna come up like 100% black, right? So if that's the standard, then none of us black, right? Obviously, black people typically don't, aren't that strict, but I'm sure there are a few black people out there who are that strict, right? 75% um, black, I kind of see this as more of the norm, you know, like, I say like at least 75% where it's like, okay, you perhaps have a look that is close enough to blackness, right? It's perhaps you may have like a, because we're oftentimes the, it's by a uh, skin tone. Let's keep it real. Black people and skin tone, you know, in the community, it's a big deal, right? Because of our history. <clears throat> So I kind of feel like a lot of people tend to gravitate towards like the 75% black, right? Um, perhaps, you know, you have like a majority black parent, perhaps with someone and another parent who's perhaps maybe a little less than 75% black, but still black enough to create a black child, you know? But yeah, I'm... I'm tending to think that a lot of people are going for the 75% black, you know, especially now because it seems like people are more so becoming more and more conscious and rejecting the one drop rule and wanting to kind of define blackness and also maybe um, counteract colorism as well, you know, and fight against that too. So I feel like a lot of people are gravitating towards the 50 per, uh, the 75%. As far as the 50% is concerned, I feel like people will give us, let people who are 50% black, 
black slide, right? Um, you know, me personally, you know, as far as like, I guess my, you know, I, as you know, recently I've done, I did a um, ancestry DNA test, right? And I posted it on YouTube and on the test, the results came back as 59% black, right? So I'm kind of like, I'm more than half, but I'm kind of less than 75%, right? So I'm kind of, you know, kind of somewhere, you know, a little bit in the middle there, right? <clears throat> um, but me personally, I kind of, this is like where I come in with, where I, like what I consider black, I would say the person should be at least 50%. Um, I feel like they should be 50% and they should have a majority black parent, right? Their parents should be at least 75% black. Then again, this is my personal take on it. I feel like this is fair, right? I feel like this is fair to, I guess, Particularly, I guess, lighter skinned people who are multi generational mix, who come from a family and a line of people, light skinned people who do identify as black and who have historically identified as black and have been in the community and have supported causes in the community as well as people in the community, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because I feel like it wouldn't be fair to all of us. <clears throat> I feel like it wouldn't be fair to all of a sudden kind of just purge those people from the community. So I feel like this would be a good cutoff point, you know, even though I probably do have family members in my own family who, while they would be considered light skin and not necessarily mixed because they don't have any connection to whiteness, um, they would probably come up less than 50% black, honestly. Um, so I guess that's when it kind of starts to get murky too, because sometimes light skinness and biracialness, the lines can start to kind of like blur together at times. Um, but to unblur those lines, I usually just say, okay, light skinned people don't, by and large, do not have a connection to whiteness, but biracial people by and large do have a connection to whiteness or at least just non-blackness right <clears throat> um, let's see oh yeah and by the way uh, just in case you might be interested um, I'm going to be okay I did you know like the DNA test uh, 23 and me right the first test I did was Ancestry DNA, but I decided to do a second test called 23andMe. Um, it's also a DNA Ancestry type test too. And I wanted to kind of compare the results between the first one with Ancestry, you know, DNAAncestry.com and 23andMe, right? Uh, but the results for 23andMe have not come in yet, and it's going to be a minute before they come in, but I guess I just throw that out there just in case you're interested in um, a comparison between results, you know, because I'm sort of am because, you know, it does kind of like, well, a second opinion, right? You're like, hmm, I wonder what the second opinion says. Um, so if you're, in, in case you're interested, um, that video will be coming soon at one point or another don't know when um, I'm assuming sometime around mm, late July early August maybe it takes a minute for them to process the, the test so yeah all right but back to this so 25 percent black I feel like that's when the terms biracial and mixed race and multiracial, this is when they definitely need to come into play. Um, and as well, I feel like these people, on some in some instances, I kind of feel like they kind of should go and 
assume a white identity in some cases. But then again, I think some black people in, on some level don't want them to assume a black identi identity. And I think that may come from the fact that they feel like, well, maybe those people are perhaps living a privileged life and they may feel like, you know, since you are part black, you shouldn't, you, sh it's not, I want to get the wording of this right, because this is, the wording is important. <clears throat> But I feel like black people do kind of feel some type of a way when they find out that someone is black and they don't consider themselves black, particularly a white passing person, right? I mean, think about it. What if we found out that some like of our favorite celebrities, you know, were part black and we didn't know it and they've hidden it for years, right? Like, let's see. What if we found out that Matt Lauer was like 25% black. I think some black people would probably be kind of like giving him the side eye a little bit. Like, it seemed like, oh, you passing, you know? <laughs> so I feel like on one hand, it's like black people kind of tend to not want to claim, or it's kind of like black people, I'm not sure if they know what, as a group, know what to do with. 25% black people, you know? I don't know if they want to claim them or not claim them. It just depends on the day, you know? It depends on the situation. And it's not fair to either group, of course. Um, so I think that's when, you know, perhaps, you know, biracial and mixed race can come into play. And that way they can claim an identity, you know, and perhaps still want to have a connection to whiteness, but also blackness too, or just not have a connection at all. It's, it's, this is where it gets confusing for me, all right? This is where it gets confusing. Um, but I'm, I don't feel like people who are 25% black, especially at this point in time where, we at, where we're at now in 2017, need to be claiming a fully black identity full stop but i know that sometimes those people's parents probably some light-skinned black person um you know light-skinned or mixed race black person have taught them that they're black right because their parent is black like i'm black so you're black even though when they look at them and some of these kids be having like strawberry blonde hair and like you know, look at Ben Harper's kids with um, Laura Derm. Those kids look straight up white, pretty much. Like Holly Berry's child looks white with some curly hair. Um, Paula Patton, her child looks white too. Like a lot of these folks be having these white passing kids. These light skinned mixed folks be having these white passing kids. And I'm like, okay. I you can have the you can have your child if you want you know that's your choice of course but it's like well if you wanted a black child why not have a child with someone who is like black <laughs> you know why have your child with someone and you want to have a child with a white person if you want a black child and you are only but half black, more or less yourself. It just is. It's a. It just don't add up to me, really. Honestly, it just don't add up. It's like I think sometimes these people want their child to be have the privileges of whiteness because they can pass as white, but also have the pri the privileges of blackness because oh, they're part black too, and that ain't cool. That ain't right, you know, because it's like. They're stepping on black folks' toes and taking their opportunities by claiming a black identity. But when it comes to whiteness, white people, they kind of, they got more opportunities to spare, to keep it real. <laughs> and also, white people set it up so that the mixed race folk ain't stepping on their toes. They set that up a long time ago. 
That's why they ain't dealing with colorism. We are, right? We don't have to worry about mixed race people. Well, they don't have to worry about mixed race people. We do, right? I mean, they do lose a person when like a black and white person come together and create a child. I guess they would lose a person, so to speak, to an extent. But a lot of times, like, white women are raising these kids, so I'm sure they're indoctrinating them with white supremacist thoughts and things like that. So these child children do sort of go on to somehow perpetuate colorism and white supremacy anyway. It's complicated. Um, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, one drop. Do you think that anyone who is one drop, a black, should be black? In my opinion, no. Um, especially like one eighth, really. That person has a great grandparent who's black, but that's it. All the rest of their relatives are white, <laughs> and we're like, no, nope, you're black. Like I really think that that is some slave shit right there, and that's really racist too, if you really think about it, because it's like, oh, this person can only be black, even though they're like way more white than there are black but you know oh you know we you, you don't have a claim to whiteness even though you are majority white and you look white you know and you have majority white relatives but no that one black relative you know that great grandparent nope <laughs> you are just as black as him <clears throat> so I don't really subscribe to the one drop rule at least to that point you know I I don't again as I mentioned before my family right um, but outside of my family I guess I wouldn't I know that's hypocritical I know I know I will admit that that is hypocritical um, but I guess in this situation I might just be a hypocrite you know um, and also, I don't know the percentages of my family when it comes to their amount of blackness. I just look by, I guess, try to decide by skin tone and facial features and things like that. And also, one thing that I do want to touch on is that some people, you know, some folks, especially like, you know, the pro-black people sometimes be saying like, oh, you know, one drop, right? One drop. <clears throat> The black gene is dominant, right? You know, you hear that type of rhetoric where it's like they seem to be really promoting like this black dominant gene that is just so strong and powerful. But we have to be honest and keep it real. Blackness can be washed away. Blackness can be breeded out. Let's be real. Because while I do feel like black I do feel like there is some truth in black genes having dominance or being dominant. However, if the black gene was really this super dominant gene, then we wouldn't have these. We, I'll put it like this. If the black gene was as dominant as people, some people say it is, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a monoracial black person, a biracial black person, a black person who is only 25% black, a black person who is only one-eighth black, etc., right? They would all look the same or have the same features, right? They would have, you know, dark skin, you know, uh, full lips, white nose, you know, those features that we associate with uh, monoracial black people. We wouldn't be able to tell any difference, but we can tell the difference, right? We can look at people and tell, okay, I, I can see that you have, you know, you probably have two black parents, right? Or you can look at some people and say, hmm, I, I think like, you know, probably one parent is black, you know, one parent might be white or mixed, maybe, right? And then we can look at other people and say, well, you know, they look really, really light and white passing, so they... They, I'm pretty sure they have like a whole lot of white people in their family, you know? So, we have to be honest and keep it real, keep it 100, you know? 
It's, and I think people say that. A lot of times I kind of see that come up when it comes, like, for men talking to women, you know. To a lesser extent, it applies to uh, the lighter-skinned black men. But for some reason, I think, like, some of these, like, these pro-black hotep dudes be trying to, like, you know, get with these, like, biracial chicks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, but these be the... Some of these dudes be the main ones saying the black woman is God, you know. But then when they get their woman, they like, you know, this, you know, biracial mixed light skin shit, you know. They're like the black man is God, the black woman is God. But, you know, when it comes to who some of these dudes be choosing, it's like, well, you know, you know, that's why they be so strong about this one drop thing. So they can, you know, date these women without being considered you know, a sellout, right? I, I don't know if I should name some names, but you know who I'm talking about. One one of these dudes, especially really popular, you know, real popular, Um, you know, in the pro-black community, you know, married to um, a light-skinned mixed-race woman, right? Um, and who feels like every everybody is black. And he makes a decent argument about that as far as like under the system of white supremacy yes i could kind of see that argument but like in outside of that system no you know um and this person has also showed kind of like low-key extreme like low-key interest but really like is getting less and less low-key but low-key interest in like white women as well right and you know it's not me bashing or you know trying to be like a you know just talking mess or anything but it's just something something to bring up right so it seems like sometimes blackness is kind of convenient like when it's convenient some of these people are black and when it's convenient some of these people are not black right and i feel like we gotta make a choice we have to make a choice we can't be we can't be like it's hypocritical hypocritical it's hypocritical for us to criticize you know the biracial and the white passing people who like to play the fence right and be black when it's convenient and be non-black when it's convenient right but we can't play the fence either right we can't be claiming them when it's convenient and then not claiming them when it's not convenient we have to have a standard and criteria that is across the board just because oh you know that light skinned biracial chick look good you know and I want to date her you know without being seen as a sellout I want to be able to bring her home to meet my family too you know have a kid with her maybe marry her lick her butt you know like whatever these dudes be doing right <clears throat> and I guess I've said pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> uh, so thanks for watching. So again, to present the question one more time, who do you consider black slash African American? Like, what's your criteria? What's your standard for blackness? Let me know in the comments section. Until then, adios and goodbye for now. And also thanks um, for you know people who have been posting in the comment section. I do try to you know interact because I really do appreciate um, people taking the time to post and leave messages. Um, I know that some of these topics it kind of shows that some of these topics do resonate with you, and I appreciate the feedback. Um, and as well, I also appreciate the subscribers too. People have been you know subscribing. Um, you know, I, I've been, you know, seeing the subscribers, the, the subscription numbers, you know, slowly rising. I'm like, oh, like people actually kind of interested in me, you know, <laughs> and what I got to say. So thanks, you know, thanks a lot. So until then, adios and goodbye for now.